Welcome back to another episode of the 7th D Podcast. I'm Keith. I'm Chris. Uh, we had one request, uh, actually from one of the members of our Fantasy Hockey League. I guess we'll just start right there for him. Yeah, uh, one of the guys in our league, uh, Nate Krejci, he uh, wanted us to go over, kind of, as we're about to enter the playoffs for yeah. our Fantasy League, what maybe we feel about our league, who's in favor to win it maybe this year, and how we view the teams that are in it. Yeah, uh, because we're, what, a 10-team league? I don't know, we're 12. We're 12-team we league. We are a 12-team league, top eight. So it makes it a very interesting, because a lot of teams have to keep adding, keep dropping. Yeah. Uh, there's a very shallow free agency pool. Yeah. Uh, like where our playoffs are, we have a 16-3-1 team making the but the best record, and then we have a 7-11-2 team going to make the last spot. Yes, so there is a pretty decent spread, and then there's a lot of teams that are just like, Right on top of each other in the middle. Yeah. One it, of them being mine. I'm right behind you. I'm. St- uh, no, I won't pass you that by the end of this year, but the two teams ahead of you, I potentially could. Yeah. I mean, if any team loses two out, I mean, or wins one, lose one, depending on how things go, our standings could really still change up. Yeah. Um, you you have the projections up right now. Who would be that first, the first round? The first matchup, which would be first versus eighth, would be Matt Wall versus... Uh, Keith Bremer. Uh, they did tie, I believe, two weeks ago. Yes. But, I mean, Wall's going to pick up tons of people. He's the one thing we have to give him. He's really good at doing that. He's good at getting picking up people, and magically, all of a sudden, they've had no goals, no assists in the last ten games, and then they get a hat trick. Yeah, so that will be, probably be the first round. Uh, the only issue I see with Wall's team is the fact that today he made a trade with you, and now he only has one goalie. Yep. And we only have three goalie categories in our league, but he only has one. You have to get a minimum four starts a week. Now, he has Martin Jones, who's a good goalie. And Aaron Dell. And Aaron Dell. So, that's, but that's it. That's one team's goaltending tandem. So, he's going to have to probably pick up a goalie from the waiver wire, which there aren't any good ones. Yeah. We have, like, Connor Helba, Peter Morazic. Morazic's on your brother's team. Oh, and my brother has picked up Mrazic. I didn't realize he uh, actually done that. And on the opposite side, Bremer's there. got four goalies. Yeah, and Bremer's actually got some decent goalies. Yeah, in a matchup versus him, he might need to drop one to get an extra forward starts to catch up. Yeah, but uh, you know, he's got Holtby. Yeah, he's got Holtby, Ryan Miller, Ben Bishop, and Philip Grubauer. Yeah, I mean, Grubauer could probably get dropped really easily. but uh, So, I mean... It, Honestly, I think he kind of hurt himself a little with that one. In a way, he did, yeah. I mean, he got... You traded him Duncan Keith. I did. But, so that gives him a decent, you know, solid... Yeah, I got got Craig Anderson and Adam Larson out of it. He's got pretty solid forwards, but those three goalie categories can play big. I mean, they've won and lost me weeks numerous times. Yeah, they... They're not... Threes doesn't seem like a lot, but... It could make your week. It can make, yeah, a big difference. Okay, but I think the edge still goes to Wall. Okay, what's the following round? The uh, following round is uh, Kevin Manscapen. His team is called Hanging with Mr. Perry. And he will be playing Call Me Cindy. Dave, our uh, league organizer. <laughs> oh, there they would be a matchup? As of right now, they would be a matchup. The Manscapen cousins playing each other. Oh, that's right, because they're right in the middle there. Yeah. They're kind of in that range that I'm in right now, too. I mean, that's going to be an interesting matchup. Cousin versus cousin. Cousin versus cousin and good team versus good team. Yeah. They're... I mean, t- you have Dave who has Crosby and Tyler Sagan. Yeah. He's got good players all around. His defense is rather well with Tyson Barry, Justin Justin Falk. Oh, he's of Getty Malkin and Petrangelo, too. Yeah. He also has Devin Nubnik as a goalie, which is going to be very strong for him. Vasilevsky ever since Bishop left has been on fire. Yeah, but however, Kev also you can't forget too is he has Steven Stamkos who they got in a trade same yep. as I are. So if he comes back, it would be just in time for the playoffs probably, and that could be very large. Uh, he's also got Corey Perry who isn't having his best season in the world, but he can still always be dangerous. Pretty much, I think Stamkos is going to decide that one. I yeah. think it might come down to a few points or shots. Yeah, and he's also got Patty Kane who there's another big point producer. His defense is kind of weak though. I mean, he's got Shattenkirk, but other than that, it's, and he has a lot of secondary Hamilton. stat players on his yeah. defense. Yeah, uh, if you had to pick between the two, who do you think is going to win that one? Uh, who won last year? I'm going with him again, Kev. I'm going to go with Dave on this one. Ooh, I think Dave is going to upset him. 
Okay. Uh, very, next matchup? Uh, <laughs> oh, the next matchup. Me versus you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Frisky versus Howard the Duck. Okay. Um, well, since you're absolute crap, I'm pretty sure I'm going to take you pretty easily. Uh, I'm pretty sure I beat you. <laughs> So, suck it. Uh, I am projecting myself to win that week. Uh, yes. Again, we could analyze our own teams, I guess. Uh, I'm winning pretty much hits, blocks, plus, minus. All categories I don't care about. However, I'm going to win probably goals, assists, shots. You, w- I will take one of the offensive categories from you. Mm, you never know with my team. I know. And I could take I both also of them take, from you. No. I will take power play points... I will. I'm ahead of you in the league for power play points, so it'll be interesting. Yeah. The week I played you, I happen to have three. Yeah. Which seems to be the case. Whenever anyone plays me, whatever their best stat is, they don't get it that week. I mean, I play teams with amazing goaltending. And I picked up Adam. Play... Lar- picked up Adam Larson, so you know he's really good for hits and blocks. So I'm gonna get like five goals against you with him. Yes. Yeah. Of course. That's how it usually goes. But you also beat me in goaltending with your best goaltending week ever. Yes. And I just added a new goalie. That is also true. I mean, I have Cam Talbot and Jake Allen, and I've been winning goalie stats almost every week, it seems, but I have the worst goalie stats in the league. It's because every team that plays me, no matter how good their goaltending is, whenever they play me, they suck that week. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have Robin Liner and Frederick Anderson, who neither one... And now you have Craig Anderson. Craig Anderson now, goes through. Neither one of my first two goalies were having bad weeks. I was just... I don't think I've won a goalie stat in over a month. No. Definitely not wins. Yeah. So... But either way, I've beaten you twice this year, I believe, and I believe I will make it three strikes and you're out. That's true. I, I did also beat the top team. Yeah, I think... Was it two years ago you beat me twice, and then I beat you in the playoffs, and then I went to the finals? Where your team got hurt and lost. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But anyway, I'm still protecting myself to beat you. Okay. We'll get off on us, giggity. Yes. Um, and then the last one will be uh, Krejci, who's the one that wanted us to do this. We'll be taking on my brother. Uh, I, my brother's the seventh team. Krejci's number two. I, My brother's team isn't that good, unfortunately, I have to say. I mean, he's got Connor McDavid. That's where a lot of his points come from. Cam Atkinson's had a decent year. His goaltending, yeah, he's got Crawford, Bobrovsky, Mraz. Oh, he's got Mrazek now because Gibson's out hurt. That's yeah. who he's picked up. Uh, he's gonna have. He's gonna. He's he'll probably get the wins. Yeah, I mean, um, he's got okay defense. He's got Cam Fowler. He's got PK Subban, but Subban's not having the stat getting year you usually expect from him. Uh, Stepan's been playing hurt. Eh, Paul Mary's been okay. Yeah, because one thing with Kretsch, he is one goalie. He just has Matt Maris, because he's really big at picking up goalies during the week. Yeah. To hit all of his stats. So he's a very stacked forward defensively team. Yeah, I mean, you got Nicholas Backstrom, who's having an amazing year. Claude Giroux, who's been picking it back up the last couple games, but it's been slow for a while. But still, when you look after that, you got Logan Couture, Martin Hansel. Uh, He's got Shaw, who can get you secondaries and chip in some points here and there. On he's, defense, you got Shea Weber. I mean, I mean, he'll, Suter, if there's a Yossi. team that can challenge him, like yeah, your team will be more offensive than mine. I might be able to take him in the categories he's good at: the hits and the blocks. Well, his team is actually still very well rounded. I mean, he yeah. got he gets goals, he gets assists, he gets shots, hits, blocks. He's his team's very well rounded. If you're if someone's gonna beat him, they're gonna need to show up. They're gonna need. They're gonna need everyone on their team to show up and have a great. Week. I think he's the favorite going into the playoffs. Uh, he's definitely my favorite to win it right now. Yeah. Uh, I think s- Kevin, Dave would both still be there. They have very solid teams. I'm going with it's going to be Dave versus Krejci in the finals with Krejci winning. Okay, that's. This is without us wanting to choose ourselves, which we would yeah, do. Yeah, obviously, but I still don't think I would win anyway. Yeah, it's true. Um, I don't think my team c- could win enough stats to take away from Krejci. I'm just a little bit more confident now that I have an extra goalie. But playoffs will start. We'll keep you updated. Still going, yeah. Uh, Krejci. Ten minutes in, I guess. 
Well, we're pretty quick. Yeah. So um, I guess we're going to keep along with the playoff theme. Yeah, playoffs. We're, but now we're going to go to ones people will actually care about. Yes. The NHL. Uh, yeah, we're going to get into uh, who we think is going to make it into those last wild card spots in the divisions. Who's going to miss? Why they're going to miss? Yeah. Uh, right now, Rangers. They're in. They're in. They have the first wild cut uh, wild card spot in the East. But they've got it locked down. I mean, they have 88 points right now as it stands. And the next team, the Islanders, currently occupy the second wild card spot. And they only have 73. And they have uh, Toronto, Philly, and Tampa right behind them, Florida. I think if the, one of those teams is going to come by and beat the Islanders, it's going to be Toronto. Uh, Yeah, I agree. I don't like the Flyers enough no. to do it. Their team's been too ice cold. They've lost their identity the only reason they're at 70 points and even in the picture is because of that win streak they had. Yeah, earlier. and Toronto's the only one of them who has a positive goal differential. Yeah, and they have just a good, solid team all the way through. It's the young, the youngsters is what's going to be the question mark. And I don't think the Islanders... The Islanders are too hot and cold. They can't really keep it all together. I mean... If they were buyers at the trade deadline... If they had made any move, yeah. something, I could have said they'll hold it down, but... I think Toronto is going to take it in the end. Yeah, uh, Tampa. Tampa's the only other one I think has an outside And that's chance. if Stamkos comes back in time to get them there. Exactly. If Stamkos comes back, they're an outside chance of making it because Vasilevsky, ever since Bishop's been gone, has been phenomenal for them, and they've played really well. If they can get Stamkos back, look out for them. I'd almost, even if they just squeak into that second wild card spot, I still could even put them as a contender. Yeah. Um, behind them, I mean, you have Florida, who's still, they're Soon. at 69 points. I just don't I think don't, it's Yeah. Year. I think next year they're going to make a few tweaks in the offseason, and I think next year they get back in the playoffs. Uh, Buffalo will be in the playoffs next year. They're at 66. Yeah, they're turning up, and they've said that they're going to do everything they can to upgrade their blue Pretty line for next year. They're missing the blue line, and they're just not scoring. Because Liner's been above a 9-2 save percentage. He's yeah. been doing what you want your starter goal to do. Absolutely. And I even would say that Anders Nielsen has been a solid backup for him. Yeah. They have their goaltending situation figured out. They have their forwards pretty well figured out. They just need some defensemen that can help. They're not very good defensively, and they're not very good offensively. Yeah, and... Besides Rasmus Ristolainen, who, after his blazing hot start, hasn't really done much either. Yeah. I mean, uh, as far as the wild card team is making a good push come the playoffs, maybe at Stanley Cup, the Rangers, obviously, they're going to be talked about. If they got Shattenkirk instead of the Capitals, they would probably be the favorite. Agreed. Um, my projection for Stanley Cup winner is the Capitals. I mean, at least in the Stanley Cup, I'm yeah. meaning. They're going to make it to the Stanley Cup this year. The only hope any team has is that the Washington and Pittsburgh meet up in like the semifinals or something like that. Game seven. Game seven, they just beat the crap out of each other back and forth, and they're so tired by the time they reach the conference finals that whatever team's there just picks up the pieces and moves on. I'm trying to think, what team would probably be at that situation? Maybe the Rangers. The Rangers have a chance, and if it's the Capitals, Rangers, and the Rangers knock the Capitals out again, oh man, that would just be so funny. Because <laughs> <laughs> the Capitals always lose to the Rangers in the playoffs. Yeah. Um... I guess after that, we'll go into the Western Conference. Yep. Uh, Calgary has a decent lead right now. I mean, it's only five points, which can be made up with the amount of games left. Yeah, and St. Louis is sitting at 71 with uh, L.A. three points behind at 68. They're just outside the wild card spot. I think that's set. I don't think that's going to change. Yeah. As long as the gold hang in St. Louis stays where it is, they're going to make it. Yeah. They're going to be knocked out in the first round, but... Yeah, they're not going to go anywhere, but... And I don't think Calgary will either. Yeah. But this will be good for Calgary, just for some of those rookies who have never really been there before to get the more playoff experience, and I think it's good for them. They maybe will make it past the first round next year. Uh, the Kings, I just don't like their team. They're... The same team people now know how to play against them. Yeah, they haven't really changed. They've gotten slower. They've gotten slower. They don't have any goal scoring. They signed another goalie instead of getting a scorer during, you know, at the trade deadline. Yeah. It's, uh, there's no, I don't see them, even though, I don't know how they're only three points out of it to begin with. 
because they're such a worse team even than that this year, I think. But I don't see them climbing back in, and I don't see Winnipeg climbing up. Winnipeg's also played three games more than them, and yeah. they're still five points back. Yeah. I, I think Winnipeg has a great team. They just need to stop taking so many penalties, and I think next year they're going to come back with a new head coach. Yeah. Which I think will make a large difference. I think next year Winnipeg's in the playoffs. Yeah, you have Dallas as an outside chance right now, but even them, they're 500 in their past 10. Their goaltending's not good enough. No. To make, like, if they had a good enough goalie that could shut it down the rest of the way and put out a, like good quality starts every single night and give his team a chance to win, yeah, the Stars could be an outside shot, but you, they don't Klingberg, have that. Klingberg looks like he's finally starting to play hockey again. Yeah, he's got his touch back. You still got Jamie Benn. You still got Tyler Sagan. But now they they even traded off Eves. I mean, I wasn't really big on Eves to begin with. He's so. a solid player, but I they're not going to be able to put a run together. To yeah, make it, I don't think. Uh, come next next year at this time, I think some of the people will be talking about. We'll see a lot of those bottom names coming up. Yeah, we're going to start seeing those top names that we've just for the last, like, it seems like eight, ten years have always been in the playoffs. This year we're seeing one that won't be, the Detroit Red Wings. Yep. They're not making it. Uh, it's good to see that Edmonton's finally in the playoffs. This is very true. Uh, I don't know how far they're going to get. I don't think they'll get too far. Uh, I think teams like San Jose and Anaheim can just we'll just end up beating up on Chicago, them. Minnesota. Yeah, Chicago, they'll just beat up yeah. on them. They're not gonna really uh, be able to do enough damage. Uh, so, who's your pick from the Western Conference? Western Conference to make it to the Stanley Cup to play who I believe will be the Capitals. Um, I'm looking down at right now, trying to see. I gotta see what the matchups end up being because you have. Minnesota's not going to make it. Something's going to happen somewhere along the way. They'll get knocked out. Uh, could go with my safe choice in Chicago again. Sticking with them. I'm leaning more towards it's going to be San Jose or it's going to be Minnesota. I think Minnesota's tasted the playoffs a little bit each of the last couple years. I think this is the year they're actually going to make a run for it. Dubnik's having a fantastic year. Bruce Boudreaux's got them scoring and playing much better. I think we're going to see Minnesota versus the Capitals in the Stanley Cup final and the Capitals winning it. Okay. Finally. Yeah, because of the teams up in the East, uh, it's got to be Washington. I mean, Columbus is at 90 points. Like, they've been having a great year. They're having a great year, but they just don't. They don't have that it. it. Not to quote Chris Jericho here, but unless Columbus, <laughs> unless Columbus is the team that takes advantage of Washington getting in a fist fight with Pittsburgh, that's the thing because Columbus is such a physical, strong team. If they were to be the ones to pick up the scraps from that, they would just demolish. It'd be like we just got done playing the Penguins. Guess what? We're gonna crush you too. <laughs> yeah. So like after the Washington Pittsburgh beat each other up, Columbus would just be like, okay, oh. I just don't. I don't see Columbus yet. No, like I said, I would have to. The dominoes fall in the right way. Yeah. Uh, Rangers. Eh, there's a reason they haven't won in a very long time. The Rangers just aren't going to be able to do it because they don't have the defense. Yeah. They don't have the puck moving defensemen, the guys that can create chances. Well, after a week, has your opinion traded on uh, that trade with Detroit? No. <laughs> <laughs> Has he done anything? No. <laughs> you know who's been a better defenseman so far? Steve Kampfer. Brought him up. <laughs> He's got a point at least. <laughs> like I've always said, you could have had Connor Murphy. Like I always said, I still don't want him either. <laughs> um, do you have anything else to add for our show? It's a little early compared to what we usually end. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, maybe one last question. Who do you think of the Canadian teams going into the playoffs, who do you think makes the deepest run? Edmonton. Edmonton? I am going to agree with you 100%. The Senators, it's a, it's one of the, it's their season to be the fluke team in the playoffs. And Montreal just sucks. Uh, for the Senators, it's pretty much... It, if does Craig, Craig Anderson, Anderson 
still continue as the elite playmaker he is right now. Yeah. Because they're not even getting that great of production from their star players. No. I don't know. I, I still I look at that all the time, and I see them second right now in the Atlantic. And I'm like, how? <laughs> They'd Condon as their goalie all year. How? Montreal. I just... Well, Anderson has played 29 games and has 20 wins. Yeah, no, Anderson's been great. I mean, I guess that's the only reason why, but... Like, when you play 29 of your team's 65 games and you have more than half of your wins... Yeah. It helps you in the long run. I can't see Montreal... Even though they're first in the division, I don't see Montreal doing anything. They're just... Not good. Price just hasn't been... Price. Price hasn't been his... If Price has been his spectacular, usual self all season... I say they could make a deep run. They're not winning any, you know, cup or anything like that. Something might be wrong. Something might be a there little off There might be an injury or something going on. Uh, I don't like their forward depth enough. Yeah. Uh, they lack, like, that true superstar, that true, like... And so do the Rangers, in a sense. They don't have, like, that superstar, but they have good, solid depth all the way through. Yeah. Montreal doesn't. They have like a couple like okay like they're good but whatever players, but other than, and then once you get further down their lineup it's like eh, there's nothing here. Well, I think this concludes it for another week. Um, we don't really have a show planned for next week, but we will be back. We will definitely be back. Um, feel free to leave us a comment, email us at seventh podcast at gmail dot com. Any suggestions you want to hear us talk about? Obviously, we will talk about it. Yeah. Thank you for giving us a, a, a conversation tonight, uh, Craig. <laughs> Come on, Shut Junior. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, that's, that's it for us this week. Have a good night.